And Allah is that tell, now telling us that this strategy of Fir'aun will not die here. There will be other Fir'auns that will come and they will employ this strategy. And in the end, that strategy will always fail. The place that I've chosen to share with you about is a section of the story of Musa alayhi salam, which is mentioned in many, many places in the Quran, but it takes a unique turn in this place, in Surah Ghafir. Uh, the way that Allah Azza wa Jal described this story is different. It stands in a unique position. And the beginning ayah that I read to you is that Allah Azza wa Jal sent Musa alayhi salam to Fir'aun. And he says about that, Bi ayatina wa sultanim mubeen, with our ayat and with, open, with clear authority. Just to put this in perspective, Fir'aun was considered a superpower and his empire was considered the mightiest empire of his time. No military on the earth was willing to challenge the Pharaoh. And they had political alliances with some of the great other civilizations of the world. And the royals and the princes from other nations used to come and get their education from them, from the Pharaohs. So the Fara'ina were the superpower of the time, economically, politically, socially. And one of the reasons they built these monuments that are still standing, some of them in Egypt today, is because if anybody would walk by or, or their ship would pass by or travelers would come by, they would look at those monuments and they would say, we don't want to mess with these people. These people are far too advanced for us to be able to mess with them. Allah didn't just mention Fir'aun. He said he sent this authority to the Pharaoh, to Fir'aun, the king, the government. Fir'aun represents the government. Haman represents his military strategist. So Haman also. And then Qarun, which represents he had some people working for him from within the people he enslaved. He enslaved Bani Israel. Bani Israel were the slaves of the pharaohs. But some people within Bani Israel were paid lots of money to keep an eye on their own people. And Fir'aun allowed them to become rich. All the other people in Bani Israel were poor. But Fir'aun, Qarun, he's got, he's a millionaire. How is he a millionaire when his own people are all slaves? Bagha alayhim. He was a he was a spy and he was a sellout against his own people. That's how he got rich. This, again, remind I mind remind you, this is the mightiest empire in the world at the time. Nobody questions them. They have immunity. They can do whatever they want. So if they want, they can just kill the Israelites and be done with it. But they actually benefit. They want to use the suffering of the Israelites and they have other political benefits coming from them. So they have to keep them alive. It's an inconvenience, but they have to keep them alive because they use them as slaves also. And they, they, they want to maintain a certain narrative about themselves. So they, it's, it's a political strategy. Let's keep them alive. If, we, if he had it his own way, he would be done with them. But he can't do that immediately. So what's the next best thing? We can't take them out militarily. We just want to make sure our own people and anybody who visits us, the, the world sees them a certain way. How should they see them? They, the, the strategy was, فَقَالُوا سَاحِرٌ كَذَّابٌ This is a, Musa is a magician, he's a liar. These people are liars, they can't be trusted. The people he represents are liars, they can't be trusted. There's an entire media propaganda that Fir'aun created to make sure everybody believes that actually Fir'aun and his people are the victims. And the Israelites are the real threat. Banu Israel and Musa alayhi salam are the real threat. He would even tell his own people, his own government, he would say, these people are dangerous. They want to kick you out of your land. And it, so he built this entire propaganda machine to make sure his own people also believe that those people, those Israel, oh, those, those guys are a threat. They're dangerous. And you know what Allah says about that? Allah says that Allah had a plan for him. Allah wanted to show Fir'aun and Haman and their militaries the thing they were scared of all along. Allah wanted to show them what they were afraid of. That ayah is fascinating because now Allah is telling us Fir'aun is terrified. You're the one with the army. They're the ones that are slaves. You're the one with all the weapons. They're the ones that get killed. They're the ones in the camp. And you're the one in the biggest palace on earth. You have all the security, you own all the media, and you're scared? You can't go to sleep at night, you're having nightmares? This is not, this is inside intelligence only Allah can give you. 
Allah gave us his strategy in the Quran so that we know how every Fir'aun that comes after him will be. So now, So when the truth came and it was clear that he's doing wrong because Musa alayhi salam came, one of the first demands Musa alayhi salam gave to him was an arsil ma'ana bani Israel. You need to let these people go. They're not your slaves. They're the slaves of Allah. You cannot keep them as slaves. You cannot keep them in these encampments. That was one of the first demands of Musa alayhi salam. And when the demands became clear, what became the response of Fir'aun? Allah says, describing his response, اُقْتُلُوا أَبْنَاءَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ Kill the children of anybody who believes in this cause with him. Kill their kids. We don't care about killing them. We want to break their spirit by killing their children. Target the children. Target the kids. And you know what? Keep enough women alive so they keep having kids. So in case they're thinking about fighting back again or standing up for themselves again, then kill more kids. It's part of his military strategy to break the spirit of these people. He could have just said, kill them. No, 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 no. Part of the direct military campaign will be, we have to make sure children die. That's his policy. And Allah is that tell, now telling us that this strategy of Fir'aun will not die here. There will be other Fir'auns that will come and they will employ this strategy. And in the end, that strategy will always fail. Now look at this. When this, even that strategy wasn't working, it's still not, you're not able to suppress this voice. And these people are not leaving their faith. They're not, they're not letting go. They're not letting go of hope. Why are they still hopeful? I killed their kids. Why are they still hopeful? Why are they still following Musa alayhi salam? Why are they still following their prophet? I, we don't understand this. So he says, we have to have a final solution. ذَرُونِي أَبْطُلْ Musa. Let me kill their leader. Let me kill their imam. Let me kill their scholar. Let me kill anyone. That they, and right now they look up to Musa, so let me start with killing Musa. Even though Musa technically is, in, is an official citizen of the Egyptian government of the time, so he's a, he's a bona fide citizen. He's not considered a slave because he was raised among the royalty. But right now, this is such a threat that even if you belong to our own country, we will have to kill you because you're too influential. Because we need to silence you. Even voices from within the country need to be silenced. Let me start with killing Musa. It'll send a message to our own country. Nobody's safe. You better learn to shut up. You better learn to shut up. Fit on policy. And then he winks what you could consider a, 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 a press release. You know, Fir'auns make press releases all the time. From the old times too. Here's the press release he gives. If we keep letting these people go and we keep letting Musa go, he might end up changing your religion. He might radicalize you. He might make you an extremist. He might convert you to this barbaric cause. And if he does that, there's going to be corruption in the country. We have to save the nation. We, our nation is already perfect. And this Musa and this Harun and this religion of theirs and anybody who follows them, these people are so dangerous, they will destroy our national identity. Our national identity is the best. If you love your country, you must destroy these people. And especially the ones that are loudest among them. Start with the loudest voice. Kill them first. That will break their spirit. If their kids couldn't break their spirit, then let their leaders, their scholars, their activists, and in this case their prophet, kill him first. Get him out of the way. Then, then what are they going to do? They'll have no leaders. Then what's going to happen? Then they'll, then they'll learn to be the slaves that they are. There were people inside Fir'aun's own, the Pharaoh's own administration who couldn't take it anymore. There were people living in Egypt that saw that we have enslaved a population and it's wrong. And I know if we speak up, we might get arrested too. We might even get killed and nobody will find out how. That might happen too. But one of them who was hiding his faith and he was keeping his conscience hidden all this time, a time came where even he spoke up. What did he say? Why is his speech so important that Allah put this in the final word to humanity? He says, You're going to kill someone only because they believe in Allah? They say, my master is Allah. 
And all the clear evidences have come to you from your Rabb. Allah says Allah will not never guide the scheme of anyone who is Muslim and Kathab. And this is how Allah saved the Israelites, the followers of Musa alayhi salam.